Hi everyone, welcome to week two. What I want to do today in this video is really briefly talk about some of the things that I thought were important from last week, highlight a couple of things that I think are important in this week's discussion, and then talk about your final projects. Because even though it's not on the schedule, uh, you do have a final project proposal due this week. And I'll give you more information about that at the end of the video. Uh, but first, the big point from last week is I want students to really think critically about the news, you know, to think about how it's produced, how journalists get the news, and what they do with the information that they receive. We have so much media right now uh, that I don't think it's just enough for the audience to rely on the old credibility cues. You know, we can't just pick up the New York Times and say, this is the New York Times, so it must be credible. We can't also in the same breath say, well, that's a blog. It's not credible at all. What we really require to do is look at the information, look at how that reporter got the information, and how much the reporter shared with us about that process. That really helps us to determine where the credibility comes from and really helps us answer that big question of, is this news? More than ever, I think reporters have to be able to justify that and answer that question for their audience of why they thought that was news. And that's why I focused a lot on it in the first week. Also, I think it provides a good foundation for everything we're going to do this quarter. Uh, and I think it leads pretty well into what we're talking about this week, the idea of beats and interviewing. You know, a beat is designed to help a reporter get to know a topic so well that he can get information that other people really can't. You know, get to that, to the heart of information that helps us make decisions about our lives and our communities. That, I think, is the purpose of journalism. I like to introduce it with students because it helps them to find stories for the quarter, of course, uh, but also to make some of those connections that a lot of people are saying are missing among young people. A beat's really important for helping us find the different types of sources we'll need. You know, in the lecture, I talk about three kinds: the uh, official sources, involved sources, and uninvolved sources. Um, on a beat, you'll get to know the official sources pretty quickly. You'll also probably know the uninvolved or the involved sources quickly as well. But those two should lead you to know the topic so well that you can get the average person involved. That's kind of who the uninvolved source is, uh, and those are really our readers. That's our audience. The more that we can do to involve them in the stories, I think the, the more impact our journalism will have. That's why I think beats are important. Once we've found the sources, I think it's important to ask them the right questions. And as I teach students, I see that they understand the questions they need to ask, you know, at least the questions they need to start out with. They know they have to ask open-ended questions and you know, act professionally and all that. What they miss most often are the follow-up questions. You know, when a source says something along the lines of, we need to do this or we must do this, they don't ask why enough. You know, when a source says, well, that makes me feel angry, they don't ask, what do you mean by angry? You know, they don't ask for details that would lead, that would, you know, guide the audience on how that emotion feels to them. The other thing I don't see that they do is, you know, they'll ask big questions, you know, um, crime, it's a problem, you know. But it's, they won't allow the source to really answer that question. Uh, the, the video and the article that I posted on, the, on our schedule that come from the Pew Center um, really talks about that, how to get people to give honest responses about big issues. And the key question there is just asking them, you know, crime, what do you make of that? I use that a lot in my career and I found it really effective. Uh, so hopefully we can share a lot of other tips um, as we talk together about how to teach interviewing and how to ask the right questions. I know we've got a lot of journalism experience in the class, so I'm, I'm really eager to look at your responses and, and read them and hope I can share a few things as well. Our final thing again is to talk about the final project. On Blackboard, there's a new section on the left-hand menu uh, that just says Final Project. There I've posted information about the project, the rubric I'll use to grade it, and the place on the discussion board where you post your rough draft for the story part only. That story, that rough draft is due on July 12th, which is just about two weeks from now. 
Um, so I think it's a good idea to start working on that and to encourage you to work on it. I'm asking you this week to submit me just a one-page, double-spaced memo that talks about your per the, the story that you'd like to do. Uh, I also want you to identify a couple of sources and a couple of the links and the multimedia elements you're thinking about. The goal of this is just to let me know what you're working on and give me an opportunity to give you feedback and tips you know, on things that I see that you might be able to work on or talk to people about or you know, potential leads that you might work on. Uh, as always, if you have questions, let me know. Um, I'll be on the discussion board. I'll be uh, responding to your blog comments again. Uh, remember, your next blog comment is due this Thursday, and comments on other people's blogs are due by Sunday. Thanks, and we'll talk to you soon.